in this problem if i put the limiting value in the given function we are going to get in the numerator and in the denominator we are having so it is basically zero by zero form right so we can apply l'hopital's rule that is differentiating numerator and denominator separately we get and in the denominator we are having now if i put the limit we are going to get So, we are getting the value of this limit as 0. Hence, option A is correct. Is it clear? Let us move for the next problem. Again, in this problem, if you observe, you will find that here x is tending towards y. So, I will treat y as my constant. So, in this case, again, if I put y in place of x, that is, if we put the limiting value, we are going to get in the numerator, and in the denominator we are having again this is 0 by 0 form as it is 0 by 0 form so we can apply l'hopital's rule so we are getting differentiating numerator and denominator separately so if we differentiate numerator we are going to get y is a constant remember it and in the denominator we are having ddx of x to the power x let me just do it ddx of x to the power x can be written as what ddx of e to the power x ln x. So, if we differentiate what we are going to get. So, it is basically 1 plus ln x. So, please remember this. I always suggest that remember this as a formula. ddx of x to the power x is always equals to x to the power x 1 plus ln x, right? So, in this case, in the denominator we are getting and as y is constant so y to the power y is also constant so it will become zero now if we put the limit we are going to get so in the numerator we are having this goes off so we are left with 1 minus ln y by 1 plus ln y right hence option b is correct is it clear let us move for the next problem. In this problem again, if you find that if I put the limit in the given function, we are going to get in the numerator and in the denominator. So, it is coming to 0 by 0 form, right? So, again applying L'Hopital's rules, we are getting ddx of p to the power x will be p to the power x ln p. Is it clear? Now, you just put the limit. We are going to get is it clear? Hence option B is correct. Is it clear to all of you? Let us move for the next problem. In this case, we have been given that x is tending towards infinity. So x plus 2 tan inverse x plus 2. Now x tan inverse x, I am writing it as. Is it clear to all of you? Now I am applying tan inverse A minus tan inverse B formula. So we are getting So now what I am doing for this limit what we will do here is basically Is it clear? So, for this part, look at very carefully. As x is approaching towards infinity, so this part is approaching towards 0. We know that limit x tends to 0, tan inverse x by x is always equals to 1. So, as x is tending towards infinity, this part is tending towards 0, and the same thing is in the denominator. So, we can write this limit will be nothing but 1. Am I correct? So, this is coming to like 1 into, this is 2x plus 2, whatever it is written. Is it clear? Now, you see for this one, in this case, the power of x in the denominator is higher than the power of x in the numerator. 
as x is approaching towards infinity and the power of denominator is more than the power of numerator so the value of this limit will be nothing but zero is it clear so it will be pi only have you understood it yes okay now the option no option is matching so option d will be the right one is it clear let us move for the next problem in this case again if i put x equals to 4 in the numerator we are going to get is it clear so this part will be 1 cos square alpha minus sin square alpha minus cos square alpha minus sin square alpha so in the numerator we are going to get 0 and in the denominator also we are going to get 0 so it is again 0 by 0 form so we can apply L'Hopital's rule so if I apply L'Hopital's rule that is differentiating numerator and denominator separately we are going to get Is it okay? Now let me put the limit. What we are going to get? Very straightforward sum. Is it okay? So that is your answer. Hence option B is correct for this one. Right? Let us move for the next problem. In this question, if I put the limiting value here, we are getting anything to the power 0 is 1. So, in the numerator, we are getting n and in the power, we are having infinity. So, it is basically 1 to the power infinity form, right? Now, if the form is 1 to the power infinity, I am giving you a little theory. That is, if limit x tends to a fx to the power gx, if this kind of functions are given, and if you put the limiting value, we are going to have fa as 1 and ga as infinity, right? Which I am talking about 1 to the power infinity form. If it is in this form, then we can write this limit directly in this way. e to the power limit x tends to a fx minus 1 into gx. This is the theory, right? This is also called your power limit. So, in this problem, as we see that it is in the form of 1 to the power infinity, so we can write this limit as e to the power. Is it clear to all of you? Okay. Now, if I take the LCM, we are going to have this expression minus n. So, minus n, I am writing it as minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 for n times. And if we separate it, is it clear? So, we are having is it clear to all of you? Now, we know that Limit x tends to 0, a to the power x minus 1 by x is ln a. Therefore, so we are having, this is factorial n. So, e to the power ln, factorial n to the power a by n, right? So, this can be written as factorial n to the power a by n. Is it clear? Hence, option A is correct. Have you understood the problem? Okay, let us move for the next one. In this problem again, just consider the left hand side. Just consider this part. Now you observe, if I put x equals to 0, we are going to get 1 to the power infinity. Is it clear? We are getting 1 to the power infinity form. So, I am applying the theory just now I have explained in the previous sum. Here, this limit can be written as since it is 1 to the power infinity form. So, we can write it as e to the power limit x tends to 0 fx minus 1 into gx. So, we are having 
Is it clear to all of you? Now we are having, right? Now they have said that this is equals to E cube. So from here we are getting 2A is 3 implies A is 3 by 2. Now you observe carefully for any value of B, for any real values of B, this term will always get cancelled. Yes or no? As x is approaching towards 0, whatever value you take for b, ultimately it will give you 0. That is, it is tending towards 0. That is, in limit we will take that thing as 0. So, here b can take any real value. For any real value, bx will become 0. That is why b can take any real value. Have you understood the thing? Therefore, option A is correct in the sum. Is it clear? Let us move for the next problem. Here they have said that alpha and beta are the two roots of the equation. So, I can write the expression since alpha and beta are the two roots. So, it can be written as x minus alpha into x minus beta, correct? Therefore, the limit becomes x tends to alpha. Is it clear? Now you observe, if I put x equals to alpha, this part will become 1 and in the numerator, sorry, and in the power we are going to get infinity. So it is 1 to the power infinity form. So we are again applying the same form that we have discussed in the previous two sums. e to the power limit x tends to alpha. Is it clear? So we are having this is actually alpha, right? Not infinity. So this term and this term will go off. Now, if I put x equals to alpha, we are going to have. Is it clear to all of you? Hence, option A is correct for this problem. Is it right? Okay. Now, let us move for the next problem. Now, in this problem, before starting the problem, let me just tell you one thing that limit x tends to 0, 1 plus x to the power 1 by x. We all know that this value will be e. Now, if you just observe this thing little carefully, you will find as x is approaching towards 0, that is, this part is very, very small compared to this part. 1 by x as x tends to 0, it will tending towards infinity. But this thing is tending towards 0. That is what I want to say is, if this part is tending towards 0, that is it is very small compared to 1 by x, that is which is in the power, then it will approach nearby e. Is it clear? Now, if you observe this part, you will find that we are having See this one, this part is very, very small compared to this part. Yes or no? This part is very small compared to 10,000, right? So, this value, this value will be nearby E. It is not exactly E, but it is nearby E. Yes or no? And we know that E value always lie between 2 and 3. Therefore, box of this, listen it very carefully. Box of this expression will be nothing but 2. Tell me yes or no. Because this value is nearby E. Not exactly E, but nearby E. And as we know that E always lies between 2 and 3, so the greatest integer part of this value will be nothing but 2. Okay, therefore, our limit simplifies to, now I am taking 2 to the power n common. So, only 2 will come out. So, we are left with, is it clear? Now, you see, as n is approaching towards infinity, 1.5 divided by 2, it is basically a fraction. And when the power is tending towards infinity, then this value will tend towards 0. Therefore, we are having 2, this part is 0, 
and again this part will be 1 by infinity so it is nothing but your 0 right so answer will be 2 in this case is it clear to all of you have you understood particularly this portion okay so option d is correct right let us move for the next problem now in this problem they have given us now since there is a special function in the given limit here we will not directly solve the problem whenever you find that there is a special function given in limit we always find out its left hand limit and right hand limit if these two limits are equal then we will say that the limit exists otherwise we will say that the limit does not exist is it clear so whenever this point to be noted that whenever there is a special function limit we always check its existence we will not do the sum directly is it clear now for left hand limit look it carefully right so this will give you what now what is h h is basically a very very small very very small positive number right now as it is very small positive number so mod of minus h can be directly written as h and in the power we are having cos of h now the graph of cos x is something like this right now h is very near to the origin so at this point the corresponding value of the function will lie between 0 and 1 therefore box of cos h in that case will be equals to 0 therefore the limit becomes limit h approaches to 0 h to the power 0 okay now h is not 0 in limits we don't get exact value so this this h is very near to the origin but not exactly equals to zero so some positive number but the power is exactly equals to zero therefore the value of this limit will be one have you understood this conception okay now let us check right hand limit so it will be mod of h to the power box of cos h again with the same reason mod of h can be written as h only and the power will be exactly equals to zero as i told you right now that h is not equals to zero otherwise it would have been zero to the power zero which is an indeterminate form but since its limit your h is not exactly equals to zero so it is some positive value to the power zero so it will be one is it clear therefore your left hand limit is equals to right hand limit is equals to one hence the limit exists and the limit is the value of the limit is one hence option c is correct in this case is it clear to all of you absolutely okay 